There are a number of challenges for New Zealand's horticulture sector. Among these are finding and retaining seasonal labour, ensuring consistent pollination, guaranteeing quality in picking and packing, and safeguarding traceability. Tauranga-based company Robotics Plus is proving that automation in horticulture can be engineered to improve systems and reduce costs. My interest in robotics really was um, I have vertical ownership right through the chain from owning orchards to leasing orchards to orchard management company all the way into ownership and post harvest and what I like to do is really look at where we're going to be in five to ten years time and what sort of things would impact us. So in terms of uh, the kiwi fruit sector I could see labour is obviously going to be a threat to all of us whether it's kiwi fruit or apples or any of the horticultural crops. Labour costs will keep rising. People today don't want to do those hard physical jobs, um, so we're becoming more reliant on RSC workers um, and anyone that's run large uh, horticultural operations know how difficult it is to get consistency with staff. So we sort of saw robotics as a sort of future way of mitigating some of that risk. I guess it really started around our pollination company and we were looking at how we could automate pollination. During that process, that's where I met young Alistair, who we then hooked up with and helped him through his PhD. But when we started looking at pollination, we thought that the goalpost of robotic pollen application was too far stretched, and we decided that maybe looking at kiwi fruit harvesting was actually a more attainable opportunity. So being a sort of entrepreneur investor, I decided to hook up with that and have a crack at that. And we started that journey, I think, in about 2009 as part of Alistair's PhD was actually was to build a prototype key fruit robotic harvester. Obviously now with the resurgence of G3 in the industry and the increase in crops and we're now this will be the biggest kiwi fruit crop ever harvested in New Zealand. Uh, you can start to see the pressures that are coming on with labour. So the level of interest is, is starting to ramp up. So we've probably been harder to get that interest in terms of kiwi fruit, but in terms of what we're doing with robotic apple packing technology, I'd acknowledge Compass Packhouse for being someone that was thinking forward as well and allowed us to form a relationship to actually test robotic apple packing and as a result we've got six commercial machines going into their packhouse very shortly which will be a great result. We're at Newnan Innovation Park. We're a park that's set up for fostering innovative companies. A lot of it's around that food, so agriculture, horticulture industry. We're in our development space as part of Robotics Plus, where we are building our first commercial run of our apple packing machines. They're designed to drop onto a standard grading sorting machine. That's the industry's really widely adopted, uh, the likes of the compact sorting equipment. Uh, so these machines take pre-sized and sorted apples. They run them through the machine and all the apples get oriented, so we rotate them and we control their rotation in a very specific way, so they lie horizontally. Once they lie horizontally, our machine comes forward, picks them up, up to four at a time, scoots them back and then places them nice and gently into the trays. So they're all in the same orientation. There's a lot of positive feedback around the concept and around the ability we've got now. Uh, this is saying that we are equivalent in performance to about two and a half people from our throughput but we're getting a better presentation, so our packing quality is better and our handling is uh, better and more consistent too, which is a really, really promising nice little step for us for, for that commercial deployment. Well, we've had one unit running in uh, Packhouse and Nelson for, we had it running in there for a couple of months, but we just one machine doing a, a small trial. We were pretty happy with that. We've packed about 1.4 million apples through one machine. It's not their peak time of the season, so it wasn't getting some of the throughput it normally would. But it's quite a promising start. Within about an hour of them seeing the machine running, they were like, where's our next nine or ten machines? Come on, when are they available type scenario? So it was a really nice step to really see that fast adoption of wanting to utilise the technology. This is our Bark 2 version of our harvesting arm for kiwi fruit. We developed a first prototype a few years back which we trialled and had a lot of learning from and we've now taken that learning and developing the new technology. We've still got a little bit to go with some of the picking hand and bits and pieces. We're refining that and narrowing it down to make it suitable for harvesting kiwi fruit in the commercial operation. Uh, about a year and a half ago we were fortunate enough, uh, Robotics Plus is the commercial partner in our 
MBIE, which is Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment, uh, high value manufacturing round, where we put in a bid with Auckland University, Waikato University and Plant and Food Research. So we are driving the, from a commercial standpoint, making sure there's a commercial focus to that research, uh, making sure there's end user engagement in that research. The other part with that is Callaghan Innovation, another government agency has been fantastic in sponsoring that project from an early stage and allowed us to really ramp up our development process to get to market faster. You know, without that we really would have been a lot longer and I think bringing more expertise into our team which that allowed us to do is, is really refined our development because you know, my skill set's rather broad uh, and same with some of the other team members so being able to get some sort of defined precise skill sets and, and behind some of what we're doing has is, is been really valuable. One of the hardest things is getting people to adapt technology. So if we had to build technology and then go out and sell it, we'd have to sell it at a price that most people would go and question whether they, whether it will work, whether they want to invest that sort of money. So essentially the model we're looking at is if you take Apple Packers in a pack house, we have an install cost and we service and maintain it and you just pay per Apple Pack. But that model is based on what it costs you currently to have labour packing. So it's, uh, in fact, it, it's not costing you any more, um, but you've got a 24-7 reliability. And then the same would go with harvesting. If currently growers pay $30 a bin to pick a bin of fruit, um, our target is that that's what they'll pay for a robot to pick a bin of fruit. So, so everything we work on is from the ground back up to look at those business models. Um, and by doing that way, it, it, it takes away that angst of buying a very expensive piece of technology. Um, so if, they don't, if it doesn't work, they can remove it. It, it sort of just takes a lot of that um, that sort of um, decision making process out. And, and we've trialled the model, um, we, we've got our kiwi fruit quad dusters that we do pollination services with. Um, and that's uh, again what we did there was we produced pollen, we created some application technology. Um, so our growers can subscribe in to have their application done for them. Uh, we currently apply pollen to about 25% of the New Zealand kiwi fruit industry with the quad duster system. And that's just proven that service model um, it works. They don't have to buy the quad duster, they can just um, dial in, let me know three o'clock today that they want their application tomorrow and the bike arrives, does the job, they, um, so it just makes it really simple. This programme was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.